Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Don't hit him with that stick. He ain't gonna hurt you. <laughs> From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Jody Foster, Jeffrey Wright, and music from Duff McKagan with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. Headquarters here in Hollywood, California. All right, things have settled down. We had a tumultuous week, butting heads with um, delusional people, but uh, things are kind of, you know, I was watching people actually play football last night. I was watching the college national championship game. The University of Michigan beat the University of Washington about 34 to 13 was the score, if you believe the mainstream media. But um, Lake Corum and Will Johnson were the most valuable players. Congratulations to them. But the player I was most taken by was this gentleman of, you know, noticed Huskies quarterback, uh, Michael Penix Jr., who has probably been through a lot. <laughs> I mean, look at these headlines today. Penix Jr. takes pounding. <laughs> Penix Jr. on loss to Michigan, we beat ourselves. <laughs> Michael Penix slides. It's not an easy life, you know, but he's gonna be, he comes from a long line of proud Penixes, and I'm sure he'll be <laughs> fine. You know, we're currently in the middle of what they're calling a triple-demic. Which sounds like the new burger at Jack in the Box. <laughs> the health officials say we need to act now to get vaccinated before it becomes a triple demic with cheese. So please, this could <laughs> supersize. The triple demic is the flu, COVID, and RSV all teaming up, like the three amigos of phlegm. <laughs> Doctors are urging Americans to um, uh, ask your medical professional or whichever NFL quarterback you trust <laughs> for preventative <laughs> advice. And I. Hey, oh, speaking of viruses, Donald Trump was in court again today. Uh, Trump spent so much time in court, the sketch artists are running out of orange pastels. <laughs> he was in Washington, D.C. for a hearing related to his little insurrection problem. Trump is trying to short circuit the whole case by saying he was protected by presidential immunity, which made him okay for him to try to overturn the election. I don't think the judges bought it. Listen to this exchange. One of the judges asked Trump's lawyer if presidential immunity meant Trump could order special forces to kill a political rival. I asked you a yes, no, yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached, would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. And so, so your answer is... Is, no. is my answer is qualified yes there's a political process that would have to occur under our the structure of our constitution that's trump's lead lawyer joe camel with the um, <laughs> most ridiculous answer imaginable i mean <laughs> if the president can order seal team six to kill a political rival it, trump had better lock the doors at mar-a-lago because bazooka joe biden has every reason to blow it to kingdom come right now the uh hearing the hearing did not go well for Trump, but after it was over, he went in front of the cameras and told everyone it did. Well, I want to thank you all, and we had a, I a very momentous day in terms of what was learned and what they've conceded. They conceded two major points that were, uh, they were right in doing it. I don't think they had much of a choice, but they're very, very big, very powerful points. <laughs> he has no idea what the points are. <laughs> there are no points. You scored no points. It was a shutout, but go on. And we, uh, we think we had a very good day today. And the concession of these two major points was pretty amazing. And uh, honestly, I'm very glad they did it. I think they did the right thing. Thank you very much. Yeah, again, no idea what he's saying. <laughs> he can't even make a point about points. His other line of defense is that charges against him would lead to bedlam, which is basically a threat. He's saying people will riot in the streets. And also, he keeps whining that the world is against him. The least I'm entitled to is presidential immunity, just like any other president would get. I'd be the only one that they would even consider not giving me immunity. Because for whatever reason, people are angry that I've done such a good job. Right. That's 
why we're so upset. He's so, and that you're so damn good looking. It drives us nuts. It's, do you think he actually thinks he did a good job? I, when my son scribbles a circle with a face on it, I, I say, good job. But even he knows I'm patronizing him. He's, <laughs> he's in kindergarten. Trump's also reported to be heading to New York on Thursday to personally deliver part of the closing argument in the $250 million fraud case against him. And I'm sure his lawyers are thrilled. They, you want to do what? You, shouldn't you be like in Iowa on Thursday campaigning or something? This man is a disaster on every level, and yet there's so many diehards. Uh, look at this house. This is a home in Maryland, all decked out in Trumpanalia. It is scarier than any haunted house you'll ever see. Can you imagine, like, delivering a pizza to that place? I would love to, spe to see Trump spend one night in that house with those people. <laughs> but for whatever reason, the race, at least according to the polls that are usually wrong, is a toss-up. Age is definitely an issue for Joe Biden. He is in desperate need of support from young voters, and Grand POTUS is now <laughs> pulling out all the bells and whistles to try to win them back. My fellow Americans, we're facing an inflection point in history. Now more than ever, we need young hustlers like you. I mean it, fam, no cap. I'm God. I'm being dead ass here, man. Bam. Another Trump presidency won't slap. I know he has Riz, but he's given dictator. He's fascism coded. I get it. You think I'm mid or cringe. Or that I represent a two-party system that makes you feel complicit in foreign policy decisions that ain't bussin'. Well, let me put Brown. A second term will hit different. I'll eat hell. I'll lick the dank plate clean like it's a bowl of Dr. Jill's famous turkey chili. Cause the national anthem is a bop. Democracy is a baddie. And America is mother. I'm Joe Biden. And I have no idea what the hell I just said. Yeah, I, to be honest, I, I don't either. Elon Musk is pushing back on uh, concerns from members of his companies who believe he uses illegal drugs. Musk says he doesn't, which would mean that when he named his baby Techno Mechanics, he had no excuse whatsoever. <laughs> According to the Wall Street Journal, any illegal drug use by Elon Musk would violate federal policies and could risk SpaceX contracts with the government. It's been alleged uh, that he has taken a variety of drugs, including cocaine, LSD, ketamine, and Twitter. I mean, I'm sorry, X. I mean, X. I'm, I always get those confused. He says he's, test he's clean in every test. Uh, I have to say, I don't know much about business, it, but it seems like it's never a good sign when your CEO has to be like, don't worry, I'm not on drugs. I'm just naturally unhinged. <laughs> If I was him, I would take the drug excuse and run with it. This is uh, our second show of the new year. We took a few weeks off for the holidays. And on a personal note, I wanted to mention that we have a new member of the family. Our kids, the little ones, have been asking for a dog for at least a year. Maybe every day it's dog, 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 especially our daughter. But we don't want to just give them one. We wanted to get something in return for the dog. So we told our daughter, Jane, who's nine, and doesn't eat anything. If you try 20 new foods, we will get you a dog. I thought this was genius. She tried six new foods, didn't like any of them, and quit. And one of them was pineapple, by the way. She didn't like pineapple. Can you? And so we said, all right, we made a deal. That's it. You want a dog, you have to try 14 more foods. And um, that's where it stopped. For months, she would not eat food. We said, no dog, until her brother stepped in. Her six-year-old Billy Kimmel took a stand. Three weeks before Christmas, he comes in, he says, we want a dog for Christmas, and if we don't get one, we know you're Santa Claus. <laughs> he shook us down. <laughs> and so we got the dog, you know? It's like, I mean, what are you gonna do? My wife... So now we have to find the dog. My wife goes on one of these, like, Tinder-style dog matching apps to find a rescue. And we got one from some very nice people at an organization called Wags and Walks. We've got a three-year-old Macadoodle. Oh, you know that, all right. A Macadoodle is half poodle, half macaroni and cheese, right? Is that the... <laughs> no, we don't know for sure what he is, but his name is Todd. He came with a name, and we thought it was funny to have a dog named Todd, so we kept it. And then uh, Jane gave him the middle name Birkenstock. We, we have no idea why. She doesn't even own a pair of Birkenstocks, but his name is now Todd Birkenstock Kimmel. 
So far, what we know about Todd Birkenstock is that he's very sweet, very calm, very nice. And if you leave the door open, even a sliver, he will burst through it like Walter Payton and run like he's being chased by the devil. <laughs> he got, on Friday night, he got away. It's like 11 o'clock, and I am running through the neighborhood as fast as I can, screaming, Todd, Todd! <laughs> People, I pray to God no one had their ring cameras going. <laughs> I have no idea why he runs. He's got it very good. He's got everything. And I, I think it's possible that he thinks we stole him. <laughs> he was living in a house with like 56 other dogs. And as far as Todd knows, he was taken from his family by us. <laughs> he thinks we are his dog nappers. So now we have a whole, uh, we have all, every electronic device strapped to his neck. Todd will never have another private moment again. <laughs> but it's terrifying when the dog runs. I needed a drink. I mean, it's, it really not was me, like- Not me, Jimmy. Huh? What I was said, that? I said, not me. It doesn't make me want to drink because I'm doing dry January. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know. Okay. So, uh, anyway, as I was saying, the... Um, Wait, I can, uh, I can explain dry January if anyone doesn't know what it is. I, I think people... No, it's really not necessary. I think everybody pretty okay, much knows so what... so basically, dry January means no alcohol for the whole month of January. Right. Okay, that's why they call it dry January, as in my mouth is dry from no drinks. Does right. that make sense? It, yes, it does. Okay. It makes perfect sense. My dry January is going really good so far. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't ask. I but... feel great, huh? and I'm just noticing a huge difference physically, like a huge difference. Okay. Don't I look different? I really don't know. I've never seen you before, so. Right, I don't... okay, well, no. and I don't have a problem. I didn't say you had a... Good, because I don't even miss alcohol. I don't even think about it. <laughs> OK. I, well, you know what? I'm happy for you, but I am in the middle of... Um, I was just talking about... Honestly, the, the most I've thought about alcohol this whole time is right now when you just asked me about it. I, I can't stress enough how much I never asked you about it. <laughs> now, I, now I can't stop thinking about alcohol. <laughs> Drinking it and stuff? Yeah. Well, maybe this is a situation you know, where... You... I mean, sure, I feel good now, but imagine how good I'd feel if I were drunk on alcohol. <laughs> you know, I have to say, it sounds like you're struggling a little nah, bit. Nah, nah, I'm fine. I just, I just need to talk to my dry January buddy. What is that, like a sponsor? No, it's not that serious. It's just a buddy I can call if dry January ever gets so awesome that I start sweating and shaking uncontrollably. <laughs> let, me, let me call him real quick. OK. Well, you... Go for Guillermo. Wait, your buddy is Guillermo? Yeah, yeah. Gee, man, I don't think I'm gonna make it through dry January. It's too hard. Buddy, listen, I think you should have a little bit of tequila to calm you down. <laughs> That'd be awesome, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think maybe you guys are kind of missing the point <laughs> of dry January because it doesn't seem, that's, um, doesn't seem like it how it's supposed to go. That's not what... It's better, right? I feel a lot better now, yeah, it's great. Okay, so after all that, you're not just giving up on dry January? Yeah, I'll do dry February. It's only like 25 days or something. 28. <laughs> okay, nerd. <laughs> yeah, nerd. Come on, guys, let's go get wet. <laughs> yeah. Happy right. January. Well, let's thank you. Let's...